TMG, which is not to be confused with TMJ, is called trimethylglycine and it is used for longevity as a methyl donor. What it does is it converts homocysteine to methionine, which then it gets converted to S-adenosyl methionine or SAMe. The vitamins B12 and B9 have similar function to trimethylglycine as they also take homocysteine and convert it into methionine. So all three of these kind of have very similar functionality. Something to pay attention here is the end result, which is SAMe. SAMe is a supplement that people use to kind of reduce their depression and anxiety. So by reducing homocysteine, by taking TMG, we are able to possibly have an increase in SAMe, which may result in better mood and cognition. Now, the reason why you want to lower homocysteine is because higher levels of homocysteine are associated with higher risk of cardiovascular disease like heart attack and stroke and also dementia and Alzheimer's disease and cognitive things like that. Elevated levels of homocysteine are usually treated with B12 or B9 in that same mechanism that I kind of showed before where homocysteine gets converted to methionine. Now, elevated homocysteine levels, like I said, contribute to higher risk of you know, cardiovascular disease and things like that. But for whatever reason, it doesn't actually show a decrease or become you know, cardioprotective when we lower those levels. So we kind of don't know if high levels of homocysteine lead to higher amounts of cardiovascular disease or is it just that people that have cardiovascular diseases have a higher level of homocysteine? But there is no benefit of having high levels of homocysteine, so we wanna reduce it, and we can do that by either TMG, B9, or B12. And as I mentioned before, B9, B12, and TMG are all methyl donors, and something I wanna mention is our DNA methylation as we age decreases. And DNA methylation controls DNA expression. Too much turns on gene expression, too little turns off gene expression. And as I mentioned, as we age, DNA methylation decreases. But similar to homocysteine and its relation to cardiovascular disease, it's hard to tell if aging causes a decrease in DNA methylation or the decrease in DNA methylation contributes to aging. This, we need more evidence and more studies to kind of get an idea of what's going on. But again, just like the high levels of homocysteine show no benefit, lower levels of DNA methylation don't really show any benefit, so we kind of want to get these in the optimal range. Something that has been shown, although it's in rat studies, and I'm not a huge fan of rat studies, but something that has been shown to decrease the age-related DNA methylation is calorie restriction. So reducing the amount of calories you eat on a daily basis by around 20 to 30% may decrease age-related DNA methylation. But again, there's not particularly any human studies showing this you know, calorie restriction contributing to decreased age-related DNA methylation. But if you're overweight and obese, calorie restriction by 20 to 30 percent you know, is good to help you lose weight and it can possibly you know, decrease your DNA methylation rate. Now, as we saw from this diagram, again, homocysteine gets converted to methionine. High levels of homocysteine are not good, but high levels of methionine are also not good. So we want that other extra conversion being done to S-adenosyl methionine. Low levels of methionine are linked to longer lifespans in other organisms. So again, higher elevated levels of methionine probably don't have much of a benefit for us. So we kind of want to get it again in the optimal range. Food sources high in methionine are animal products such as beef, lamb, fish, eggs, and then plant foods such as nuts, seeds, legumes, vegetables, and fruits. Obviously, I'm not going to sit here and tell you to eat less veggies and fruits to control your methionine levels. You could cut back on animal products if you know higher levels of methionine is of concern to you. I want to quickly go over the NAD pathway because the TMG mechanism kind of relates and has a purpose and the logic makes sense when we see the NAD pathway, why you would supplement with TMG if you're supplementing with an NAD booster. So first we have nicotinamide riboside, which is also known as NR. It gets into the cell, turns into NMN, which then gets converted to NAD. NAD then turns into NAM for excretion. NAM is not something the body wants to have in large amounts, so it adds a methyl group to it, calling it methyl NAM, and this is then excreted and you know thrown out of the body. So as you can see, if we take high levels of NR, NMN, and NAD, or some kind of other NAD booster, we're gonna get increased amounts of NAM, which means we need increased amounts of methyl to make it methyl NAM, so this may deplete our methyl stores that are in the body. So it makes sense that you wanna supplement with the methyl donor. And this is where TMG comes into play because it's a methyl donor, it can increase Increase the amount of methyl stores inside of your body and able to give it to homocysteine to turn into methionine, able to give it to NAM to turn into methyl NAM, and so on. Now it's been said that high levels of NR and NMN are needed to cause this depletion of the methyl groups from the NAM to turn into methyl NAM. 
doses as high as two grams per day. And I don't think there's many people that are taking NR and NMN at two grams per day. The usual dose is around 300 milligrams for nicotinamide riboside. So you're well below that two gram cutoff for there to be a DNA methylation decrease. So the TMG supplementation for methyl donating is probably not that big of a deal if you're at those levels of NR and NMN. I mean, those doses of NR and NMN. The evidence is not really clear whether it's necessary to supplement with TMG at this time, you know, one way or the other, when you know, saying that it's not necessary or that it is necessary, but TMG is relatively safe and cheap. So I don't really think there's that much of a downside. The logic is there for you to supplement with TMG based off of the methyl donating characteristic of it. Now, TMG has an additional benefit in that it increases exercise performance. And we can see from this study titled Epigenetic Modifications as Outcomes of Exercise Interventions Related to Specific Metabolic Alterations, a Systematic Review. There is human data showing that exercise slows down the aging process by this study. The results read, Resistance exercise in humans induced epigenetic changes in pathways associated with energy metabolism and insulin sensitivity, contributing to healthy skeletal muscle. Endurance exercise also caused modifications in biomarkers associated to metabolic alterations through changes in DNA methylation and the expression of specific mRNAs. However, both resistance and endurance exercise are necessary to obtain a better physiological adaptation. So this study kind of reiterates the obvious that exercising is good for our health and it could increase lifespan. And then TMG increased is exercise performance so it has dual benefit of increasing exercise performance which is good for longevity and increasing your methyl stores potentially which also has a benefit because we don't want our homocysteine levels to be elevated or our NAM levels to be elevated and there was another study that showed an increase in lean body mass and a decrease in body fat now this was a small study of only around 22 people but still pretty decent results showing an increase in uh, lean body mass a decrease in body fat and then increased exercise performance and methyl donating now, there are studies that show that TMG improves liver health, but these are rat studies with no control group. So take it with a grain of salt, but the studies show that there was an increased metabolism of fat and alcohol by the liver. So kind of increasing liver health like that. But I wouldn't necessarily say that TMG increases liver health based on a rat study. I'll probably lean more towards it's probably not going to make my liver any worse. That's kind of the way I would look at this. I wouldn't say that it really has liver benefit. I would say it doesn't really have any liver risk. It might improve liver health, but the evidence is not really there. So now I want to go over dosing and when to take it. You probably want to take it in between meals to decrease absorption issues. The regular dose is around 500 to 1000 milligrams one to two times daily. So kind of a max dose of 2000 milligrams. However, safety has been been shown up to 12 grams of TMG per day. So it is kind of safe up to that dosage. I would stick to 500 milligrams to 1000 milligrams of TMG once daily if I were to supplement with TMG because the NR studies show that there's not really a decrease in methylation. And I don't want to take high doses of TMG when I don't necessarily need to since I'm not taking high doses of NR and MN to begin with. Now in terms of safety, as I mentioned before, it's safe up to 12 grams per day. So we're kind of good on that. We're nowhere near that with our 500 to 1000 milligrams per day. Also, it has shown to increase LDL cholesterol, which is your bad cholesterol, at doses as low as four grams per day. But again, we're well below that at 500 to 1,000. So probably not going to see an increase in cholesterol biomarkers um, in terms of that. Also, if the TMG blood levels get too high, you may experience diarrhea. As this is a common side effect of taking too much TMG. Now, something I want to mention is methylation clocks. These can kind of measure your biological age. Obviously, they're not FDA approved or have much science behind it, but they are, you know, pretty good or not bad to kind of see trends in your biological age if it's increasing or decreasing depending on you know what you're doing with your life your lifestyle changes and your supplementation um, there's this website here do not age.com that sells a dna methylation biological age kit 275 dollars currently which is a hefty price but i've seen it as high as 400 or 500 dollars previously um, i don't think this is a bad investment to see you know where you kind of are in terms of your dna methylation biological age and then kind of see trends you know maybe every year or every six months or every two years whatever you know however freaking you're comfortable you know measuring these levels to see trends in what's going on in your biological age so you can see that oh hey this you know this change i made in my life had a positive benefit or a positive effect whereas this other one had a negative effect not meant for diagnosing or you know hard fast rules it's just kind of to show you trends so should you supplement with tmg obviously if you're not taking nr or nmn or some kind of nad booster there's no need for it there's no need for increasing your methyl donating you know groups if you're not taking these nad boosters just make sure your homocysteine levels are not elevated and you have adequate b9 and b12 and you should be fine but if you're taking you know nr and and then, you know, even low doses at 250 or 300 milligrams, 
then it's possible that a low dose of TMG would provide some benefit. It probably won't do any harm because the studies aren't always showing that it has any harm. But I'll always be on the lookout and keep you guys updated if any updates do happen with the evidence and you know new research and stuff like that to see if you know we should continue supplementing with TMJ or to stop it altogether. Now I have another video on longevity where I go over metformin and if that has any effect on longevity. So please check out that video. I'll link it in the description for you to check out. But that's it for this video. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the content. Thank you all for watching.